I'm working with a couple of people right now that, that, that they've come to me and they said, we want your expertise, we want you to produce, and we do want you every so often to jump on camera and jump on mic because you can help it facilitate, but we want you to produce. So they are pulling me out of this role and put me in that role. Uh-huh. Those are fun. It, it, yeah. It's challenging the flip table and flip role, but yeah, you're right. It's their show. I, I better not muck it up for them, but I'm producing for them. It goes a lot of different ways, doesn't it? It sure does. I mean, it could be, it it could be a host show, and you're hiring the producer. But you know, it it could be uh, if it's a bigger show, a producer, and they're looking for a different host. I mean, it's it's so weird now. I mean, because you know, a lot of us are are small businesses, right? Solopreneurs. Yes. So we we're all our own brand, and we all can create whatever we want. But you know, we can also uh, work with corporations, right? So. Um, if you're working in a with a bigger um, organization, you know, it probably is for it gets complicated the more developed the podcast becomes. Yes. Because, you know, maybe you're just starting out in the beginning and maybe you just have a um a full page graphic that is the title of your show, and then you fade into, you know, these talking heads. Um, but as you go along and as the show evolves and as the audience evolves and grows you want to be able to keep up with that growth. So you want to be able to, um, you know, trick it out a little bit. I'm not saying, you know, it has to be a Hollywood production, but hey, listen, production value is is important. Yes. Music, uh, you know, in some cases, music, video editing, if we're doing a video podcast. Um, to have that show bumper and have your producer. And that's one of the fun things about Restream. Uh, because so we talked about that earlier. You can have the main person on camera and grayed out in a little box is the producer in the in the gray box. You can still see the one, two, three, go. You 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 can still see it. <laughs> so as, as you do the bumper, there's so many physical cues you need to do to let them engineer it, produce it right, and you still have to be ready to go. The minute that camera goes on, you got to go. Hi. I know. I know. It's true. I love the engine. And and you know what? One tip also is especially when I do restream and, you know, I just broadcast right here from my uh, office, um, my home office, but when it's, you know, when you have the three, two, one, I'm standing there, uh, sitting here and I have my eyes fixed on that camera and I'm smiling and I have that pose. Mm-hmm. That pose is set at, at three and that pose stays there for three, two, one, zero. And I, I even give it like an extra two counts. Yes. Because it's okay if you're like this in the beginning of a show, but it's not okay if you're like, you know, your eyes are closed and you have a funny look on your face. <laughs> so, so be prepared because little funny things happen, right? Uh, time with the internet and the whatever, mm-hmm. bad connections. You, you could be in limbo for a second. You could freeze. Something can happen. <laughs> let's take them to the end of the show. I think the producer role at the beginning and end are both very important. They, they do. Are you set? Are you ready to go? Do you got your water? They, they, they make sure you're ready to go. And then they do, will do the three, two, one. Ooh, and then, yeah, and then you're, water. yeah, <laughs> there you go. And they set you launched off. So you are at that mark. It is go back to one smile. Here you go. The end of the show, their role is just as important to land that plane, isn't it? Oh my gosh, of course. I mean, you know, you want to create an experience for the listener and for the viewer. So uh, you, you want to be able to be smooth with your ins and your outs and your wraps and your closes and your intros and your, you know, tossing the commercials and all that. Yeah, it, it is important because with that, um, you know, I think comes a bit of trust too and how you're, how you're coming off. So I think I think it only helps. How does we wind down here today? I never aim for perfection. Never, never perfection. Never aim for perfection. I always say if you aim for perfection, you will lose direction. So you need to just be, uh, you know, be yourself. How does we wind down here today? What's the number one tip that you would give anyone who's thinking about launching the podcast and getting a producer to help them succeed? What would be the one of the best things you could tell them today? Geez. Um, Well, I would say even backing up from there, why do you want to do this podcast? And um, who is the audience? And to make sure that you have all of these things figured out, because a lot of people just want to jump in. Oh, I'm a coach. I'm going to do a podcast. It's going to be without a plan, without an actual plan. Say, this is going to be fun. And then you're going to spend money, you're going to throw money at a producer. You got to back up and you have to say, 
what's the reason for me doing this podcast? You know, how does this fit into the business plan? What is the um, schedule going to be? Am I going to be committed to this for a certain amount of time? You know, once you have all of those things and what is going to be the content and, and, and how is it going to flow? So once you have those things figured out, and I'm not saying you have to have it all figured out, but jot it down, have a little roadmap, then, you know, you'll, you won't be wasting money and throwing stuff against the wall. That's a great clarifying point. I'm going to just dive one second deeper on that because I've had shows and topics I've worked with people. They sound cool, but they have nothing to do with the target that we're, uh, that, that we're really aiming for and maintaining. It's the producer's job to call you back to attention to that. At least in my experience, it's the producer's job to say, God, that's great, but that's not our show. Right. That's right. The, produ the producer keeps you on target. You know, that was fascinating, but that is not going to help people sign up for their colonoscopies. That's our goal. You know, so don't go sidebarring about something else, you know? So absolutely. Yeah. Because you have to keep that target audience in mind. And what is it you're trying to achieve? Keep the goals in mind. And I think, I think you can rabbit hole, you know, that, you know, you can rabbit hole in this situation. Um, because it's like eye candy and it's so much fun and it's so oh. exciting and it's like nothing better. But, you know, you can also lose a lot of time by doing that. And uh, I certainly learned the hard way, I would say, in like 2020, 2021, working through the weeds. But I'm kind of glad I had that journey. But I'm trying to save people time and money and, uh, you know, get to know what you want first before you, I don't want to say pull the trigger because we're I'm talking a trick here, <laughs> but, you know. I said it. <laughs> it works. There you go. Pat, how can they find you with the best way to connect with you uh, post this NSA live interview? Oh, thank you. Yeah. So my name is Pat Lori, rhymes with story, but you can uh, reach me at patlori.com. That's P A T L O R E.com. And of course, I'm on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram, and uh, every other place you can imagine. <laughs>